Hey there, welcome to this first update for Koala Sampler. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is the new features that have been added. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the introduction of some new looping functions. And just yesterday, I believe EQ was introduced, which is like a really massive talking point uh, within the Koala community. So we're going to jump into that. Now, first, I just want to mention very quickly, if we take a look at my iPad screen here, uh, some of you will know that I make these iPad skins that are on my website and I've sold a bunch of them. What I didn't realize that when this uh, update was introduced it was going to shift the user interface ever so slightly so now you can see the pads are out of line this little like audio volume thing is out of line what i'm going to do i'm going to jump into photoshop i'm going to have to contact a few people in terms of getting some new uh like layout sent to me and things so it might take me a week or two but i'll get them all updated get this all looking really nice because of course i want to do the same for my own um and i believe through my shopify account anybody that's purchased a pack of these skins before I can send you updated products because they're digital. Of course, it won't cost you anything. It's completely free uh, and I'll get everybody updated. Of course, I didn't know this was going to happen. I've only just released these skins and it's just caused me uh, a bunch of work. So as much as I'm really excited about this update, it's also just caused me like a massive headache. But anyway, we won't uh, we won't dwell too much on that. Let's dive into like the really cool new features uh, and see what we've got. So I've got a few samples laid up on the pads here. Uh, we've got a drum loop, then there's something melodic. Just a few things I can play around with to kind of demonstrate. I'm going to look at the looping things first and then we'll get to the EQ. So if we click edit here, what's happened I believe is this edit window looks bigger to me now. And it probably is because if you notice at the side here, if you're looking for the new EQ function, it's on a tab here. At first I didn't notice it, it was uh, one of those things that I had to look for a second. But that's how you access the EQ menu. Um, and because this editing window has now been increased, it's really good because it gives us a clearer view of the waveform, which is, you know, always like a good thing. Um, but as I said, it's kind of shifted everything else down. So I need to come in and play around with the skins a little. But here we have our usual edit window. If we click one shot on this loop uh, and then we click the loop button, just watch what happens to the new loop button now. It changes as you click loop and you get this little drop down menu and inside of that menu we've got a couple of options and that's what we're going to talk about first. So if we don't press any of the options, our looping works as it always has. And our loop plays as a continuous loop. If we come in here and we turn on ping pong, it does exactly what it suggests it's going to do. It's going to play the sample from the beginning to the end. When it reaches the end, it's going to play the sample in reverse, and then it's going to hit the beginning and start playing that way again. And of course, it's going to continue to do that until you tell it to stop. Now, that's super cool because we can have this like ping pong effect to be like creative with. And I think for me, that's what all of these like new sort of looping tools are. They're like creative functions. They're things that open up your world of sound design or just, you know, experimentation. So the looping obviously is dependent on where your start and end points are. So if we drag this to say like these first two kick drums. We get exactly that. We can make it shorter still. And that's where you get into the realm of some like quite nice uh, sort of sound design. So if you take a small portion of uh, like a wave file, uh, say, I don't know, like a little bit, one, just one of these peaks here, and then we play just this tiny little fraction. You get this like low humming because of course we're just bouncing around this small piece of uh, audio here but this what start this is what starts to let you build your own instruments um, because we still have the same functions that we've always had so if i have this on this pad i go into sequence here i click the piano and then click this pad i can now play that tiny little piece of audio that's bouncing around kind of like an instrument <laughs> Very good for like creating your own bass lines, but you can create any kind of instrument from there because of course you could come in and apply some of the like performance effects and all that kind of stuff. Um, so bear that in mind, like the, um, this ability to like ping pong through a sample doesn't necessarily have to be just big chunks of the loop. It doesn't have to be a thing. It can be, and of course that's super fun as well, but you can really start to like, you know, zoom in and take these like really small microscopic pieces of audio and just do something really wild and creative with it so that's the ping pong function 
We also have a couple of options for that, which I'm going to jump back into in a second. Uh, but let's just keep looking at the other options. So we'll turn this off. Then we'll choose loop point. And now loop point opens up this extra little looping window here. And for me, that's kind of how I look at it, is that we've got our first loop here. And we can still adjust all our start and end points. And then we have this secondary loop. And the reason it's a secondary loop is because if we play our sample now, We, it plays through the whole sample and then it begins to play inside of this uh, small secondary window here. So again, lots of creative options because you could have a bunch of uh, pads and samples trigger and they'll play a certain piece of audio and then start flipping around or bouncing and doing all kinds of like creative things. Um, so that's really useful. Don't forget as well that you can apply it to the whole loop. Although you've essentially got like two looping windows, you can just use this as like one big main looping window. So any of this uh, like thing that we want to muck about with in terms of inside of here, you can just apply it across the whole sample. Um, but I think it's particularly cool for doing something like that where it plays through a part of a sample and then bounces back in. Um, what we also can do if we take like this, if we turn ping pong back on for a second, watch what happens to the sample. When it hits our secondary loop, it starts to ping pong back and forth because of course that's what we've told it to do. Again, just creatively opens up like a world of like sound design and fun stuff that you can play around with. Um, now some of the other functions that we've got inside of here, or the other function I should say, is this crossfade option. And I'm gonna demonstrate this using this um, sample that we've got here. Turn, turn my tape up, turn my tape up. And the reason I'm using this one was because when I tried to think about how I was gonna put this video together, it was interesting to try and describe what's happening here. Uh, and this is gonna kind of just help me do it a little bit. Might be a little bit irritating because I'm gonna loop a small portion of this, but it will demonstrate my uh, per, uh, you know, my points. So what we've got here is obviously this sample loaded inside. We're gonna do one shot. We're gonna do loop. And we're gonna turn on the loop point. Now, what we need to do is just choose a point here. Now he's saying, turn my tape up. And I'm going to take it from where it says tape up. So not my, but tape up. And watch what happens when we play the sample. Turn my tape up, tape up, tape up, tape up, tape up. We get what we just did before. Now, if we play with the crossfade, let's, uh, let's adjust it now. And hopefully on my screen, this is nice and clear. But you can see you get these like envelopes or slopes, as I call them, like envelopes, like appearing here around this sample. And it's based around our like secondary loop here. So as we adjust this across, you can see how those like envelopes change. Um, and of course they change by the amount that you apply inside of here. But if we put that back, we know that when he starts looping over here, it's tape up. That's the only part of that sample that he's playing. Just listen to the audio as I play with the crossfade. We'll turn it off to begin. Turn my tape up, 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 tape up. As I said, a little bit irritating with the sound, but that's uh, a good demonstration because what you can hear is that as I bring uh, this like crossfade section up or we apply more of it and this like uh, sort of slope or envelope becomes uh, bigger, it starts to play some of this first portion of the sample through. So instead of just saying tape up, you can start to hear him saying my tape up. And then as I did more of it, you can hear this like turn part just slowly starting to come in. And that's why I use this particular sample as um, a demonstration, because when I was trying to do it with the drums, it wasn't really so obvious what was happening as it was kind of looping over. Uh, but again, if you imagine this in like a kind of creative context, it creates these lovely, like seamless, like, yeah, cross faded loops that just are really smooth. You could do that with something melodic, do all kinds of things with it. So it just, again, it opens up a world of uh, potential for like, yeah, just like experimenting and like having fun with it. Um, the other thing that happens is you can, again, do the ping pong from here. And you'll notice that it plays around with like the way the ping pong kind of functions and the sort of start and end points. So again, I'll just do that as a demonstration, just quickly move the crossfade.
Turn my tape up, up me a 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 tape up, up
you technically you don't need it if you're smart enough you don't need like eight of these points sure you could add the ability and maybe he will i don't know what he's got planned maybe he will add the ability to tap and add another point or whatever but you kind of only need one simply because if i wanted to add like a bit of mid-tone to this sample that we're playing here and i was happy with that but say I needed to EQ something else and I was looking for another one of these filters, all I have to do is go into the sample and then come into tools and bounce that piece of audio because, in fact, let's demonstrate it. If I just take a second copy of this so that we're not destroying one of them. Uh, let's use this one here. Let's, uh, let's take out a bunch of the low end and just mess around with it generally. Let's say for some reason I wanted that. If I go back into the edit page here, go to tools and then do bounce, that's exactly what it's done. It's adjusted that. It's made this audio file now with those EQ changes built in. So if I wanted to re-EQ it again, I hit the EQ tab, everything's reset. I can now come in and add another point and do all of that. And it's a, you know, it's a couple of buttons. It's not the end of the world to be able to just bounce between the two pages and do that. So keep that in mind. If you've got the EQ functions and you think, well, maybe it's a bit limited, it really isn't. You're only limited by kind of your own creativity with that. Um, so I just wanted to address a couple of things because I do feel like sometimes this guy like gives us his heart and soul and uh, <laughs> the comments are like instantly, oh, but I need this and oh, but I need that. It's like, come on, give the guy a break. Anyway, so we've got this. Yeah, we've got two shell filters nice little bell kind of curve eq as i call it in there and you know we shelf eq shelf filter however you want to call it um but we've got those at either end the next thing that you can do because let's say you've got it like this and like i just applied some mid-range to this sample that is spread over like a large and wide area because that's essentially what like that bell shape does now the thing you need to be able to adjust and it took me a second to work this out because there wasn't any manual thing on this and i didn't read it online but actually if you hold down two fingers on here you'll notice this little q icon come up and that's how you adjust the q so if i drag it right down i get to like 10 it's got like a numerical value and i think it starts at 0.5 uh, and goes to 10 and then when i just drag this along i've now got this really sharp point in my like bell curve and that's sometimes what you want because you don't want to apply necessarily whatever it is mid-range low whatever but if you've got it over like a wide area it's adjusting too much of the sample you want this eq nice and tight because you're trying to focus in on a particular irritating noise or you want to boost a certain frequency whatever it is you want to do you want to be able to adjust that cue so that you can do that and that's how you do it you hold two fingers down so you see the cue icon you might have to push all the way down or in this case if i want to widen it out i need to push right up to the top of the screen and now we're back to like a nice wide like bell curve there and it works the same for your um like shell filters at the same here again it's like two fingers and you can adjust the cue of that um like shelf filter or shelf eq you can adjust it here like super handy you can see it like as i said it's you know you can change it so it's gonna uh do like a cut off and a, like introduce some like resonance and things like that um so loads to play around with and as i said double click boom everything's reset or hit the reset button and do it that way enabled and uh yeah disabled so that is the eq functions and the new looping functions i hope you've enjoyed this video as i said I will definitely get on to sorting out these iPad skins because I don't want to sell things to people that were only useful for like a couple of weeks. And as it turns out, because this update got introduced at kind of unfortunate timing for myself, that's what happens. But I am going to fix it and I'll get them sent out to all you guys that have uh, bought them already. Really appreciate any support for things like that when people buy stuff. I don't particularly come on my YouTube and ask for likes or subscriptions or doing whatever. But when people show support, it truly like means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for whatever the next Koala updates are, because as I said, as soon as any more updates are released, I'll add a new video. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Take care. Catch you guys in the next one.